What's going on, Hokie Nation? Welcome into this week's Triumph Spotlight right here on TSL Today. Our guest today is the 2022 ACC Men's Basketball Tournament MVP, statistically the best three-point shooter in the ACC this past season at 42%. The anchor of the defensive backcourt, you know him, you love him, Hunter Couture. Hunter Couture coming up next on this week's Triumph Spotlight. Well, folks, today's show is brought to you by Triumph NIL. The Triumph Digital Network is a fully integrated portal featuring individual channels for Hunter Couture and all of your favorite Hokie athletes. Visit triumphnil.com for exclusive engagement, merchandise, and content opportunities, as well as subscriptions. Let's introduce the crew today. I'm Giovanni Heater, joined alongside Carter Hill and, of course, Hunter Couture sitting across the way. Hunter, how are you doing today? Thanks so much for hopping on with us. I'm doing good. I'm glad to finally be here. I've seen clips on Twitter about this little setup back here, so it's pretty cool to see it in person now. Yeah, no doubt about it. Well, I guess we can uh, fly right into it here. You've accomplished so much in your time at Virginia Tech. Why come back? I just feel like I had unfinished business. You know, last year kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. We didn't have the year we wanted after winning the ACC championship. Um, and I just feel like there's more to do. Um, obviously, there's a record I have in mind of breaking um, a lot more games to win, and I just want to make a deep run in the NCAA tournament. How tough of a decision was that for you, and what other opportunities were you maybe weighing? Yeah, it was tough. There were some days where in the morning I was thinking, all right, I'm coming back for sure. And then later in the afternoon, I was like, ah, I don't think I'm going to come back. So it was flip-flopping a lot, um, obviously thinking about the professional route and weighing those options and things like that. But ultimately, it came down to I just felt like the relationships I had here um, with Coach Young, the coaching staff, and the players, I just felt like I had another year in me and I wanted to prove more um, to our fans and to kind of to the country. When was it that you let Coach Young know you were coming back and as well as your teammates, and how did everybody kind of react to all that on the, the inside house type of thing? Yeah, so I think it was about – a week and a half ago on Friday, he was coming back from a recruiting trip. I was like, hey, can we meet up? He was like, sure. Um, I kind of wanted to mess with him. Me and Coach Young have a really <laughs> good relationship. So we got in there. I was super quiet, and I was trying to play the whole cards. Like, I wasn't coming back. I was like, I don't know, man. I don't know if I could do it. And I finally told him, I was like, I'm coming back. And he kind of threw his phone, and he just looked relieved. Um but he was excited, and I told my teammates, and they were all pumped up, too, so it was pretty cool. Was he buying it early on? Was he like, oh, gosh, like, no Hunter Couture next year. Was he buying it? Yeah, he well, he told me. He was like, I couldn't read you. Um, he was like, you got out of your car, and I didn't want to look at you. I was sick to my stomach, um, <laughs> things like that. But it, it was all good. Well, I know he wanted you back. You mentioned the record next year. As a team, what is there left to accomplish? You've won the ACC, but I know you guys want to start maybe advancing in the NCAA tournament. Mm -hmm. what, what's there left to accomplish, do you think? I think the biggest thing is just having a, a good, strong conference record in the regular season. You know, a lot of times this past year we were, I think, the 11th seed. The year before that, a 7th seed. Um, and then the COVID year we were a 3 seed, but there was a bunch of games that um, – got canceled and stuff like that. So I think the biggest thing is kind of proving ourselves in the regular season, maybe getting a top four seed, top eight seed. So we're, we get a bye there. Um, and then once we get to the AC tournament, make a good run and be poised to make a run in March. I think that's the biggest thing. You know, all the games in November and December matter, but when it comes down to it, the biggest games happen in March. On Monday, Chase O'Brien, the young man uh, who designed the shoes that Coach Young wore from the Carillion Children's Hospital program, got to ring the bell, signaling that he was done with chemo. Uh, you tweeted out saying that this was the best news uh, that you had heard. What has Chase meant to you and to this program? Yeah, he's meant a lot. You know, kind of seeing his 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 spirit in the locker room when he came and seeing him in the starting lineup, it it brought a lot of emotions to all of us in the locker room and out there on the court. So it was so excited seeing that video and kind of he's, you've never seen him without a smile on his face. You know, he has no worries in the world. He's living life to the fullest. So I think it inspires all of us. Talk to us about your relationship with coach young. You mentioned the conversation you've been with him for four years. He said nothing but positive things to say about you. What's your relationship like with him? Uh, yeah, I'm glad he said a bunch of positive things about me because I'm sure <laughs> behind closed doors he's got other things to say. <laughs> but we have a great relationship. Um, he's my dude. We've been through it all these past four years. Um, like I've told multiple people, I'll go up to his office and I'll sit in his chair and he'll sit on the couches and we'll just eat lunch and things like that. I'll go up there probably three or four times a week and we just talk about life, whether it's about basketball, 
my personal life, his personal life. So we've really connected, I think, this past year a lot more off the court um, and things like that. But he's been he's been for me um, through thick and thin, so it's been good to have him by my side. Justin Mutz was on here sitting in that chair, and he said that you are definitely Coach Young's favorite. So, <laughs> uh, Going back, what was your recruiting process like when you were originally coming to Virginia Tech? You know, why'd you come here in the first place? Yeah, it was crazy. So obviously the whole story about me being committed to Wofford early on in my senior year, and then Coach Young got the – the job here in April and kind of called me and was like, Hey, I believed in you since day one. I want you to come with me. I was like, all right. I had no idea. So I knew Kerry Blackshear cause I'm best friends with his younger brother, Keenan Blackshear. We grew up together from the same area, Orlando. So I knew him and that's all I knew about Virginia tech. And so I came here, visited and was shell shocked cause it's a lot different than Wofford, <laughs> a lot bigger and a lot more people. Um, but kind of fell in love with it on my visit and committed and kind of went from there. And I think I committed April 20th, and was up here on May 26th, so everything kind of flipped 180 for me in my life, and I was up here as an 18-year-old kid in Blacksburg, Virginia. What do you think made this past year tougher for you guys than maybe you would have imagined? You know, you go to the NIT, maybe some NCAA tournament expectations. What do you think maybe wasn't clicking for you all year long? Yeah, obviously you can go the route with injuries. Um, I'm not going to use that as an excuse. Yeah. It happens as part of the game. Um, I think we just couldn't stay consistent enough. You know, we had some moments where we were really good offensively, um, really good defensively. We had games where we put both together, but I don't think we did it enough to stack games where it was three or four games in a row where we could really put it all together. Um, and I felt like we had talent to be an NCAA tournament team and stuff like that happens. You know, North Carolina, I think they had talent to be an NCAA tournament team and they didn't make it. Um, it happens every year. So I think the biggest thing is just coming into this next year, being hungry, uh, being gritty, and just really staying consistent on both offense and defensively. You had a front row seat to the uh, women's team and their run to the Final Four. What is your relationship like with the Brooks family, and what was it like to be along for that journey? Yeah, it was probably one of the coolest things I've experienced just as a, a basketball fan, um, going out there, being able to go out to Seattle, see him win that, and then go to the Final Four. Um, obviously, I'm dating Chloe. Um, have a great relationship with Gabby and Kendall. And then Coach Brooks has been like a great mentor to me um, going through kind of this process too. He's been talking to me about it. And then just also on the basketball side of things, just talking to me. He's kind of been my dad away from my family back home. You know, I get to see my family probably twice, three times a year. So he's really been a great mentor for me, um, helping me on and off the court. Um, but they've been great, have a great relationship with them. But it's been cool, you know, seeing George, Liz, and Kayla coming with them. Um, and it was cool to see them kind of make that run this year. Everyone had that high expectations for them to go to the Final Four, make a deep run, and for them to actually do it was pretty cool. So some new additions this year. You bring in Tyler Nickel from North Carolina, Robbie Buran, newly from Northwestern, and then Makai Long from Old Dominion. How often have you talked to them? Have you had any communication? And what do those three bring to the table for next year? Yeah, so I remember Tyler, he visited here. I think it was between us and North Carolina out of high school for his kind of recruiting process. So I met him on his visit two years ago. Um, pretty cool dude. Saw him this year um, when we played against him. I think he's a great player, can really put the ball in the hole. Uh, Robbie, I just met this past week, and he visited um, before he committed. Uh, he seems like a cool dude. C talking to the coaches, they say he'll bring a lot of uh, defense and rebounding to the team. And so I'm excited for these guys to get here and kind of go through this process and develop relationships with them. Do you think that Coach Young's done? You think everybody that's here is going to stay and then, you know, nobody nobody else is going to come in? You think this is kind of the roster we're looking at for next year? Yeah, I think that's the thought around here. Obviously, you never know in the whole transfer portal in the world right now, but I think everyone's in good places right now, and I think we have a good feel about this is going to be our team. So Sean Padula made a huge jump last year uh, from his freshman year to his sophomore year. Anybody on the roster that you could see making that similar type of jump? Maybe not to that huge extent because mm -hmm. he really did take a big leap, uh, but that played last year coming into this upcoming season. Yeah, I'm definitely excited for Rodney Rice. You know, he kind of people saw his kind of potential that he had, but he really didn't get to put it on full display kind of with dealing with injuries and things like that. Um, also, Lynn Kidd, I think, is putting a lot of work in this offseason. So I'm excited for him to see what he can show out there. You mentioned Lynn Kidd. You mentioned Rodney Rice. But who maybe could surprise us that isn't in, isn't on anybody's radar, that's maybe on the team right now or coming in or a freshman coming in? Who might maybe surprise us next year? Um, that's a great question. I think a lot of guys. I think they all have a – a really good work ethic. You know, John Camden's been working out of this offseason. Um, I think he can make a leap forward. Um, 
on the defensive side and on the offensive offensive side shooting the ball. Um, a lot of the guys, we got hard workers. So a lot of them getting multiple workouts in a game. So I wouldn't be surprised if any of them really made a jump out where everyone's surprised. So I see them in the gym all the time. We're all working. So I'll be excited. I hope everyone makes a jump, um, obviously. But I really, there's not one person where I'm like, okay, this person's definitely going to do it. Who in the ACC do you just – love playing against is it the blue bloods like duke and unc is it of course virginia is it somebody else like from your home state who do you love playing against and turn it up an extra notch for yeah um obviously playing virginia is always a fun one getting to go there and then playing in castle every year uh, i've yet to win there that's probably one of my goals this year is to win at the jpj okay it's tough to win there but i think it'll be exciting um and then obviously going against north carolina and duke you know i grew up my dream school is North Carolina, um, so it's really cool always getting to play against them and Duke. I feel like you got to say Duke and Florida State, too, a little bit. Florida yeah, State, Florida they game in Tallahassee last year, yeah. and obviously Duke with the ACC championship game. I forgot, but Florida State was fun, so that was my first time playing at Florida State, and that was like the first time a bunch of my best friends from home go to Florida State, so they were able to go to the game. I had my parents there, my high school coaches there, so it was kind of a cool kind of party of going back to Florida and having them there to see that game. Well, what does the off season now look like for you? A lot of early morning workouts, um, a lot of golf, and kind of just taking care of my body, making sure I'm healthy for the year. Um, trying to get in as much work as possible, but also trying to work smart and not work hard. Well, going into that whole golf thing, tell us about some of your passions and hobbies <laughs> off the court. Yeah, uh, I love to golf whenever time, and whenever I can get time to go out there if it's a nice day. Um, other than that, really chill dude. I like some adventures. I'll go hiking maybe once in a while, go out to the pool and like kind of lay out, hang out. Um, other than that, maybe play some video games here and there. Now, where do you golf around here? Do you go over to the river course or? Yeah, yeah. I'll go there sometimes. I'll go to the country club. Um, I've golfed on the, on the tech campus course a couple of times. So I've been, I've, been wanting to go out to Roanoke. I've heard there's some good courses out there. Have you uh, have you seen that new Netflix show, Full Swing? I have heard about it. A oh, bunch okay. of people have told me to watch it's it, and good. I haven't gotten to it, but I've heard it's really good. I'm a big golf guy, yeah. and it, it's fantastic. That's really, really good show. What's the toughest hole at the river course real fast? Oh, what's the one with... Um, I haven't uh, played 16? it enough, so I probably won't be able to help you out. I'm trying to think. One, two, it might be three. I end up in the water every time with the sand on yeah, the right yeah. and the, the river on the right. It's Th it's not good for me. Three and I think 16 are the toughest. I'm trying to think what's 16. Is that... It's the one... You're talking river course still? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've only played there twice, though. Oh. So I've played there a couple of times. I'm trying to think. Is that the par... No, it's not the par three. Is it before the par three? Adam, yes. Adam I shouldn't have asked you if I couldn't have helped you out. <laughs> well, what has this partnership with Triumph been like for you thus far? Yeah, it's been awesome, you know, talking to the guys over there. Um, I'm excited for kind of their vision for me and getting that up and coming and kind of like their vision for all the student athletes at Virginia Tech. I think they're doing a good job and they have a good plan in place to kind of brand ourselves out there and kind of put us out there and grow kind of our name, image, and likeness, the whole point of it, um, to kind of – expand more and kind of get our voices and our our face out there to grow beyond when we're done playing our sports our respective sports what else do you want to accomplish in the whole nil arena like any local businesses or charities that you'd love to get involved with uh, in the little bit of time you do have left at blacksburg yeah um obviously want to get with charities and connect with the community i think that's the the coolest part about nil is getting that chance to to connect with different kind of peoples around the, the community that you might not be able to before NIL, um, to kind of hear them and kind of see them as big hokey fans and kind of help their businesses out. They help you out. Um, so I think the biggest thing is just connecting with different people around the community. I don't think I have anyone, um, in mind, obviously I love L rods. I've posted on Twitter multiple <laughs> times. Um, I don't need an NIL deal from them. They're good people. Every time I go in there, they're all daffing me up saying what's up. So it's pretty cool every time going there, but, uh, Honestly, just connecting with the community and trying to give back to them. Well, got some fun ones now. Got some fun ones. What is the toughest place that you have played on the road? And where is the loudest place you have played on the road? They may be together. They could be separate. What's yeah. the toughest and what's the loudest? I think the toughest would be Cameron just because a lot of people don't notice. As soon as the fans get there, 
an hour, an hour and a half before. So even when you're out there warming up, they're out there screaming at you, yelling at you, and there's so much sensory overload. Where like sometimes I have to go back to the locker room just to get a quiet place, just because it's so hard to like concentrate and think straight. They're yelling the whole time. Um, so I think, and they're there an hour and a half before and screaming all the way to the end, final buzzer. So I think that's a tough place or the loudest place. Um, a tough or loud place also is JPJ. Yeah. Um, when they start getting going there, those fans are passionate. They love Virginia basketball. Um, so it's it's a tough place to win. Obviously, they have it shows their record at home is pretty good. I was gonna say away from Castle, I think Duke and UVA are the two loudest places. Yeah, for sure. I've seen a game. We were at the UVA game in Charlottesville this year, and. I think it was Reese Beekman who slammed at home before mm-hmm. the end of the half. Yeah, the place was. Rotting. Hate to give him credit, yeah. but <laughs> I know, I know, it's pretty loud in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Carolina's quiet. Yeah, well, not, he can't. Yeah. He can't. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No doubt. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> How about your favorite uniforms? I liked our black ones we had this year. It was kind of new. Our first ones wearing black. Um, I'd have to say the black and the orange ones were probably my two favorite this year. What is your favorite place? Well, that's a little repetitive. Let's say, what is your go-to pregame playlist? Mm. We'll go with that one. That's a basic one, but we'll go with that one. Love Drake. Whenever, any type of Drake, whether it's pregame, postgame, about to go to sleep, about to hit the golf course, love Drake. I've been getting in the country recently, um, kind of expanding my my music taste, but uh, definitely Drake, um, maybe some Kanye or Lil Wayne. What kind of country you've been listening to? Morgan Wallen, okay. um, his little new album, or I don't know if he put out a new album. Luke Holmes. Yep. Yeah. Um, those are probably the top two right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like it. Um, what's your favorite place to play? Now it doesn't have to be like the craziest or wildest, but something that's maybe a little special or sentimental to you. Yeah. Um, probably Florida State, just because it's close to home. A bunch of my friends go there, and kind of being able to see them before and after the game was probably cool. So I think that's probably my favorite place to go to. All right, this is an interesting one, too. What is your favorite spot to hang out in in Blacksburg? Sharkies. Sharkies. It's a little fun place. Okay. Um, I like going there. Bingo night's fun. I won the other night. I was I was excited. Um, but probably Sharkies or Elrods. I think that's just a, a cool place to go eat and kind of hang out with friends. Do you go to Trivia on Tuesdays? I don't. I no. know they have Trivia on Tuesdays. I, I have not up. been, but I've heard it's really, really uh, good. I so. have to do that. Yeah, we're sophomores. We yeah, can't, no, we we can't, can't go to Sharp. Yeah, no. Unfortunately. <laughs> How about your favorite Mike Young quote? Because there's a lot of them. Mm. So one of our GAs actually has notes of everything he says. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> and it's probably, you could scroll for ages. He says stuff um, to people, how, why you, you're standing there like a wet dish rag. Um, some of it doesn't even make sense. He was Tough like, as a pine knot. Yeah. Like like that saying one, stuff yeah, and yeah. everyone's like, what does that even mean? And you're just like, like the freshman will come and he'll say it and they'll look at me and I'll just be like, just don't even worry about it. Um, he said, what, you've been there since the, the rocks were cold or something like that. So he just says <laughs> random stuff and we don't even know what it means. Who's the toughest player you've had to guard in your time here? You know, and I was, it's bittersweet because he's also my favorite person to guard is Isaiah Wong. Okay. Um, when he da- really announced that he was going um, to the draft, he's I think he's just so quick and he has such a long stride. It's hard to predict what he's going to do, um, and he just his jump shot too. He, it's, it's you can't really contest it. He hits tough shots, but he's my favorite person to guard too, just because of that challenge. It's so mm-hmm. hard to go out there, and I know I'm going to have to be on my A game every time I'm out there guarding him and really lock in. So I have to say he's probably the, the toughest person I had to guard. Now, after the Duke game this year, you've done both. Would you rather get hit the game-winning shot or snag the game-winning steal? Because mm. I know you're a defensive guy. Yeah, so. game-winning steal feels good. you still got to go with game-winning shot. It's yeah. just a lot more electric in there. Um, that's one of my – I think I've never had – Obviously, had the Miami um, buzzer beater to send to overtime, but I've never had like a, a buzzer beater game winner in my career. I think high school or college. Right. So it'd be pretty cool to have one of those. All right. You're from Orlando, obviously. I'm sure you've gotten this question before, but Disney or Universal? Where are you going on a, on a De- Sunday afternoon? Definitely. My mom works at Universal, so I have oh, to say Universal. Or I'm okay. gonna not get a call from her this week. <laughs> 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 Who was your favorite player growing up? LeBron James. I'd say growing up, I just like the way he has a complete skill set, um, can shoot the ball, can pass the ball, can defend, all that kind of stuff. And then as I grew on, um, Steph Curry, just him changing the game, shooting the three ball, really. I like shooting three, so it really inspired me. 
So you may have to correct me if I'm wrong, because you were here and I was not. But when Justin Mutz was on, he told the story about El Nino. Yes. And how, so I may have you take over because I don't want to uh, butcher anything. It was something along the lines of, it was you two in the training room. Mm-hmm. And he said, hey, Hunter, from now on, address me as El Nino. And you're like, I'm not doing that. Yeah. And Brian Cox latched onto it, but nobody actually calls That's him exactly El Nino. Lab. So he came in. A bunch of us were in the training room. He was like, my name's El Nino now. I'm like, I'm not calling you that. That's not your name. It's not going to stick. And everybody's like, we're in like, everyone's laughing. They're like, all right, we're going to call you that. I was the only one. I was like, I'm not calling you that. And then he did whatever. Brian was in there. So our media started getting out on the media and people started calling him that. And I had to give him credit. He he figured it out and pulled it through. So I called him it once. I don't think I'll call him it again. Not <laughs> often do two stories like that line up. I but know. here we go. No, so. Did they, did they <laughs> call you anything? Um... No, not really. They call me Hunt. That's about it. A lot of people call me Agent Zero. But yeah. Nothing crazy. I like Agent Zero. Where'd that come from? Other than the number, is that like a reference to something? I don't know. Agent Zero? I don't know. I, yeah, I can't tell you. I don't know if... Um, sounds good, though. Yeah. It sounds really good. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. Sounds really good. How about your favorite team growing up? And then we got one more for you after this. Um, Obviously, the Magic. Um, growing up when they were good with Dwight Howard and Hito Turkoglu and Jam- Jameer Nelson when they made their finals run. So that was fun to watch. Um, and then I probably the Cavs just because LeBron was on it. How do you want to be remembered here at Virginia Tech? Mm, that's a great question. Um, obviously, on the court, just want to rem- be remembered as a winner. You know, someone that went out there um, every game, every season, every play that kind of just gave his all. Um, no matter what he needed to do, he would do it. Um, and then off the court, just wanted to be remembered as a good person. You know, I think that's all our kind of main goals. Um, kind of what I take pride in, just being a Christian, just kind of being out there as being a good person. You never want to leave a bad image of who you are. Um, no matter if I'm a downtown and people want to say hi or take a picture, that might be their first impression of me. And I don't want to be that guy that's like, no, I don't want to do it. Yeah. So I'm always wanting to be set an example for the younger generation looking up to me and also the people that are fans that are getting that one time to see me or to talk to me that you want to talk to them, see how their day's going. Hunter, best of luck to you in the golf game this off season. <laughs> and uh, we can't wait to watch you do it one more time next year. I appreciate you too. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Hunter Couture, the show again brought to you by Triumph NIL. Thanks so much for joining us on this week's Triumph Spotlight. And we'll see you next time.